voted the worst move of the offseason by NBA executives, the Bulls' pickup of DeMar DeRozan is getting completely disrespected. Despite not being a traditionally modern three-point shooting guard, DeMar's been one of the most efficient offensive players over the last two seasons in San Antonio. Stay tuned to see how Chicago's getting disrespected and every reason for why DeMar DeRozan will shine with the Bulls. How's it going, y'all? This is D-Flo. If you haven't already and enjoy my content, help the channel get to 50k by subscribing. Also, splash thumbs up for the beastly YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this. In 2019-20, DeRozan had one of the most efficient offensive seasons in league history for the Spurs, reaching the 50% mark in field goal percentage for the first time in his career. San Antonio's star became the first guard to average at least 22 points per game on at least 52% shooting from the field since Michael Jordan in 1991. Despite that, DeMar didn't receive a single vote for an All-NBA team, signifying that he's the most overlooked star player in basketball. Heading into the offseason, DeMar, who was one of only seven players to average at least 21 points and six dimes, with a true shooting percentage above 59%, was getting treated like any other role player would in the rumor mill. There was talk about DeRozan taking a veteran minimum type pay cut and implications that he'd be best suited to come off the bench. The poor judgment went way too far, even if it wasn't for no reason. The modern NBA has been dominated by efficient three-point shooters, an area where DeRozan's well-known reluctance to take part in has hurt his reputation. DeRozan made just 19 of his 74 deep range shots last year. He's never made over 34% of them in a season and has finished just below 30% nine times. An absence of three point shooting is the main reason DeMar DeRozan's known as a player who has a vintage playing style. DeRozan put up an efficient 21.6 points per game this past season in San Antonio. However, his career 28% three point shot is considered to be an impairment to his team as he hinders their indispensable floor spacing. The issue with that opinion is that it's false. When you dig a little deeper, the San Antonio Spurs as a team shot 35.5% from three-point range when DeRozan was on the court. And when DeRozan wasn't on the court, the Spurs shot 34.4%. When DeRozan was on the court, the Spurs' offensive efficiency ranked 11th in the NBA. When the two-time All-NBA player was off the court, their offense ranked down at 28th. That stat alone should have gotten DeMar and the Bulls widespread praise from the media, or at the very least, no disrespect. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I think they increased their chances only to a point, though. And George, this is what stuns me. I haven't covered Jerry and Michael Reinsdorf for years and years. That was an ownership group that did not want to go all in to potentially be a, a team that got bounced in the first or second round of the playoffs. Well, guess what they just did? <laughs> they went completely all in on a team that at its highest ceiling maybe, maybe gets to the second round of the postseason. So I'm still surprised. I know Karnasovas and Eversley are trying to do their own thing in that front office, and I know fans are excited. But when I look at that team in comparison to the rest of the East, I just don't think they improve that much where you can start looking at them going, oh, okay, I see them having a legitimate chance to get up to the top of the Eastern Conference. Look, my guy Nick has covered the Bulls for a long time, and he nailed it on the head. The Bulls have gone all in on two sub-all-star 30-year-old guys in Nick Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan to try to keep a guy in Zach Levine who has never been on a winning team, and now it's going to be a free agent in the year and could leave. And I think there's a real chance the Bulls don't even make the play-in tournament. You know, when you talk about this depth in the Eastern Conference, I think they could finish 11th or 12th very easily. They're going to have a terrible defense, and you look at the way this team is built, like, yes, those guys are durable, but I do not see them having any kind of high ceiling. And now they can't trade a draft pick until, what, 2030, 2040? <laughs> I mean, they, they've just put themselves in a box for what? For no high ceiling at all. It's just, it, like Nick said, it's baffling. After all the painstaking rebuild they went to not keep Jimmy Butler, who is, by the way, better than all of these guys they have, it's just really strange what the Bulls have set themselves up with here. In addition to those clips, as I mentioned in the intro, executives voted DeRozan to Chicago as the worst free agency acquisition this summer. So all around, the disrespect has been real. The main reason I think DeRozan to Chicago will work out is because Debo will have the most talent he's ever had next to him throughout his entire career. 
We all expected DeMar to become a second option to LaMarcus Aldridge in San Antonio, but with the big man's decline, DeRozan had to carry the Spurs' scoring load. After all those years in Toronto when he was the go-to scorer, and the past three in San Antonio, going to Chicago finally allows us to see DeRozan as a second and on some nights a third or fourth scoring option. The pick and roll tandem of Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic forces defenders to lock in on that two-man game. Defenders also have to check the second year forward Patty Williams who dominated as the main option during summer league. Considering the Bulls have a ton of efficient spot up three-point shooters, Picking up an underrated passer and supreme mid-range bucket in DeRozan works out. On catch and shoot threes, Levine took two and a half per game in 2021 and made 49% of them. Vucevic took six spot up triples per night and drained 40% of them. Lonzo did the exact same thing as Vooch. Here's another reason for why this was a great pickup in my opinion. Defensive sets get torn apart when a player or team either chase a shooter, leave a big man open at the rim, among many other mistakes. But there's a short list of players talented enough to bend the opposing team's defense with a combination of ball handling, athleticism, and scoring ability. DeMar DeRozan is definitely one of those guys. While DeRozan himself isn't able to make three-point shots, his ability to bend defenses combined with his much improved passing vision leads to easier shots for his teammates. If you were to surround DeRozan with players that were incapable of hitting shots, he can't make them score. But when surrounded by capable shooters, DeRozan is able to put those shooters in excellent positions to succeed, and the Bulls certainly have the shooters needed. So with his generationally great mid-range shooting in addition to that, over the next four years, I feel the Bulls have a real shot at becoming championship contenders, and as we saw with the Suns and Bucks this year, anything can happen. Zach Levine finally has a legit second option next to him. DeMar's got the least amount of pressure on him that he's ever had, so that's why I think despite a lack of elite defense, this Bulls team can outscore anyone and play at an insane pace that'll make a lot of teams give up. But are the Bulls disrespected in your opinion? Let me know in the comments section. Follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops for dope hoops content on the go. Have a great day. Dflow signing off.